Yo, what's going on everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot and today we're going to continue our series where we pick one player from every single NFL team that I believe is currently being undervalued or underdrafted in fantasy football drafts. Now, last week you heard us talk about the AFC North and the NFC North. Now this week we're talking about the AFC South and NFC South, but today we're talking about the AFC South in particular. We're talking about the Titans, the Colts, the Jaguars, and the Texans. On Wednesday, we'll cover the NFC South when we talk about the Falcons, Saints, Panthers, and Buccaneers. So buckle up if you're one of those teams, but let's get into it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We appreciate all the new people joining the channel. We got fantasy football videos coming every single day, so make sure you're subscribed and check out those videos. But today, we're starting with the Tennessee Titans, and this guy's been under undervalued in fantasy football ever since he got the starting job for the Tennessee Titans. That would be their quarterback. Ryan Tannehill. So, like I said, he's one of the most underrated QBs in fantasy football. He's not necessarily the most, you know, sexy guy on your team. You don't get intimidated when you see him on the opposing team's roster, but I think this guy should be drafted in more leagues, and here's why. Now, since he got the starting position at the quarterback, he replaced Marcus Mariota about two years ago, week six of 2019 exactly, and he has scored 580 0.74 fantasy points over the last 27 games. He's played every single game. He hasn't had any injury concerns, and he's been out there averaging 21.5 fantasy points per game over that span, and there's only four quarterbacks that have scored more points than him over that same time frame. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Aaron Rodgers, and Deshaun Watson. So he finished as QB7 last year, and the year before that, he finished as QB4 in the games that he played, because I'm not going to count weeks one through five. He didn't even play in any of those games, but from week six on, he finished as QB4. I think I said QB, but if I said wide receiver, who cares? He's a QB, although he was a wide receiver in college, so props to him. But since then, since he got that starting job, he's been an absolute stud, and people are still reluctant to pick him. Maybe they look back at those times in Miami, and they're like, man, no thanks. But you look at his ADP, he's nearly pick 100, and I got all the other QBs in front of him on the screen. I mean, you got Tom Brady going a full two and a half rounds earlier around pick 70-ish. Not saying Tannehill's a better football player than Tom Brady. I'm not going to come out and say that. That'd be way too bold. And I don't think that's true. But over the last season and a half, Ryan Tannehill has been a better fantasy quarterback than Tom Brady. Now, people just hear Tannehill's name and they just run. They hear, they think of the wide receiver, the Miami Dolphins era, where it just wasn't good. It just didn't fit and it didn't work out there. But he's been a legitimate QB1 ever since he started for the Tennessee Titans. And I think he should be more on the radar for people. Around, I mean, this is rounds 9, 10 that he's going in. And I don't. I think he's much better than a guy like Joe Burrow or Jalen Hurts or Trevor Lawrence, Baker Mayfield. All guys going a little bit after him. But I just don't think those guys got a lot more question marks. Now, could some of them finish above Ryan Tannehill in fantasy football this year? Yes, but I don't really want a lot of question marks going into the year at my QB1 position. And I think Tannehill will satisfy everything you could ever want at that position. I don't think he'll be a very good starter for the whole entire year. Plus, they hardly even pass it that much in Tennessee, but he still puts up crazy numbers. They still got Julio Jones now. AJ Brown's still there. Derrick Henry's a beast. Ryan Tannehill. Keep his name on the roster. You might want to draft him in your fantasy football leagues. Moving on to the Indianapolis Colts. Now, if you've been watching my fantasy football videos over the past couple weeks, you know how big of a fan I am of Jonathan Taylor. But, you know, I've already beat his, I beat his name into the head of everyone, that's every viewer. So first off, I appreciate you for tuning in. And we're going to move on to a different guy, although I do love Jonathan Taylor at his current ADP. I think he's a little bit undervalued. But move on to the, another second-year guy for the Indianapolis Colts, the wide receiver, Michael Pittman Jr. So... Maybe it's not this year. Maybe it's not next year. But I feel like this young man's talent jumps off the screen if you ever watch him. Now, he hardly gets a lot of opportunity, and that's what limited him in his rookie season. And, you know, not much he can do there. Now, whether or not he jumps off the screen this year or maybe next year, I think he's a great play in a dynasty league. Now, if you look at it in snake drafts, pick he's wide receiver 58, pick 158. So borderline undrafted in the majority of leagues out there. And, you know, he had some very promising games last season with Phil Rivers. Philip Rivers at the helm, and I'm hopeful he can take another step this season. I really do think the Colts believe he takes a big, big leap this season. Now, obviously, you look at the wide receivers in this, in this, on the depth chart. You got T.Y. Hilton, always been there, Colts lifer. Then you got guys like Zach Pascal, Paris Campbell, who Paris Campbell, I I used him in fantasy football last year, but he was he got injured very early on and he struggled with injuries his whole entire career. Now you look at the Colts, they did not invest a lot into this wide receiver group. This offseason, they said, you know what? I don't think we need to. Now, people shamed them. They said, you know what? Why aren't you guys addressing that that position? You guys 
struggled sort of last year, but they said, no, we got, we got T.Y. Hilton still. We, I, we really think and believe in Michael Pittman Jr. And I think Pittman Jr. is a good sleeper, a great deep threat. And we all know how much Carson Wentz loves to chuck the deep ball, which arguably was a limitation and kind of hurt his teams in the past, but I don't think you could change the tiger stripes or whatever the saying is. I think Carson Wentz will still be going deep and Michael Pittman Jr. will be that guy. Now, do I expect Pittman Jr. to become a must start, you know, set it and forget it wide receiver this season? Not really, but he deserves a spot on a lot of your rosters. If you got a deep bench, I'm normally targeting him to throw him down there because he could be, have a very good fantasy football season, be very useful, especially for teams that are in leagues that are in like a best ball format where you just take the best overall score. This guy's going to have some very good years this season or very good games this season, and I think he could win you some games in those weeks. But moving on, and I really like that Michael Pittman Jr. guy. I hope he has a good year this year. Moving on to the Jacksonville's at Jaguars, a very interesting team fantasy football-wise. Now, they, are, they say, ah, we have a QB competition. Yeah, no, that's, that's, they're just, you know, putting that out for Gardner Minshew lovers out there. And I love Gardner, but sorry, this is Trevor Lawrence's job and he's not going to lose it. Now, if you look at it, the running back room is a weird one. You got James, Ro James Robinson, who won a lot of people fantasy football leagues last year because he went undrafted pretty much in every single fantasy football league. And he was like, what, running back four or five? He was an absolute stud last year. And then what did they do to reward him? Hey, here's Travis Etienne. How do you like that? Now, the rookie out of Clemson, I don't really know how to judge this backfield. One of them's going to be really good. One, I think, will will fall off. Who will it be? I, I would probably bet James Robinson will fall off, but I really don't know. So I'm not going to talk about any of those. Move on to one of their... The most annoying people in fantasy football, if you've been watching him, Marvin Jones Jr. And as a Lions fan, you might have liked him, might have hated him, but Marvin Jones Jr. has always produced in fantasy football. Now, you look at his the first preseason game, which happened yesterday, Saturday, because we're recording this on Sunday to post on Monday. Marvin Jones Jr. looked like Trevor Lawrence's top threat, and that's, in, and that's shown in his ADP already. He's wide receiver 50, pick 130, moving up nearly five spots so far. Now, Marvin Jones Jr., like we talked about, yeah, he showed a good connection with Trevor Lawrence, and he looked good. Now, that, i got to take note, DJ Chark was not out there. DJ Chark, do 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 now, he wasn't out there. <laughs> he had a, he had surgery for a broken finger maybe, I believe, a week ago. So we'll see if he's actually ready for week one of the season because, you know, it's a wide receiver. You really Your hands are your most important thing, asset besides your legs as well. Now, Chark did miss several games last season. So not only that, you look at it, he's also a free agent this offseason. So we'll see how that plays out. I don't necessarily, not going to say, hey, he's going to get traded. But I do think it's something to note for this upcoming season. Now, you also have LaVisca Chenault. That's the other wide receiver that's going pretty high in fantasy. Personally, I'm going to be avoiding him. And maybe he'll be in my 10 players to avoid. Not necessarily saying LaVisca Chenault is bad. I just don't, I don't really know the role that he'll be playing on this Jaguars team. I feel like his role could overlap with like a Travis Etienne's role. And then it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, I feel like he's just being a little bit overdrafted, whereas a guy like Marvin Jones Jr., he's being underdrafted. This is a guy that's produced time and time again in the NFL, a guy that has played 15 or more games in five of his seven career seasons, and he finished as wide receiver 15 last season in standard scoring, wide receiver 18 in PPR leagues. Now, I don't expect him to be a top 20 receiver. No, I don't, I'm not saying, not going to stand on that hill. And while I did stand like kind of on that hill with Mike Williams, this is another guy that I think will be a, a wide receiver three on a lot of fantasy football teams. It's being drafted as like a wide receiver five. And so I think he'll be a top 30-ish receiver by the end of the year. And it's also worth noting, Jaguars, very, very, very bad. They're not going to be a good team. I don't expect them to just, Trevor Lawrence switches them on a dime and they're now a playoff team. Don't expect that. I think they'll be down a lot. And that means a lot of yards, a lot of targets for Marvin Jones Jr. And I think he has a good chance. I mean, he's got nine plus touchdowns in three of his past four seasons. He's always had a good he has always been a very good red zone threat, and maybe they, maybe Trevor Lawrence knows that. He's going to factor in that, and we'll see a lot of touchdowns and targets going to Marvin Jones Jr. So I'm drafting him in my leagues if I can later on, maybe as my, a bye week fill-in, or even some guy that I think could take a big, big step that people just aren't expecting. Just like another guy, the guy that we'll be talking about with the Houston Texans, Brandon Cooks. Now, if you've been watching the videos, you know I'm a Brandon Cooks lifer. I'm a fan of him. Wide receiver 35, pick 96. Now, you saw this one coming, and I won't really talk about him too much. Let's not sugarcoat it. Now, why is he going so low? Number one, because people think there's going to be a big drop off from Deshaun Watson. Number two, he's a Houston Texan. Who wants a Houston Texan? People think this team could win the least amount of games than the NFL this season. And would that surprise me? No, not really. But 
You look at it, this team's gonna be very bad. Just like the Jaguars, they're gonna be chucking the ball a ton, a lot of a lot of receiving yards and passing yards to become. Now you look at it, Tyrod or Tyrod Taylor. I don't really know how he wants to pronounce his name now, but he's still the, he's the quarterback of this Texans team because I doubt Deshaun Watson will be out there. And while he, during his NFL career, he's been very serviceable. He's led some very fantasy friendly offenses in his NFL career. Now with Cooks, we're talking about a guy that was wide receiver 17 last season. He's played 14 plus games in each of his last six seasons, and he's a wide receiver one on this bad, bad, bad. Texans offense. And it's ain't even close. You talk about the guys behind him, Anthony Miller, Kiki Cootie, Chris Conley, a bunch of other no-name guys behind that. Cooks, most talented guy on this roster. Maybe that leads them getting traded to a better team. Who knows? But you look at it, he's the true wide receiver one, and I love it. I love his target share that he will see. And compared to guys like Will Fuller that are going around him, Jerry Judy, LaVisca Chenault, who I already talked about, all these three guys are all being drafted right near him, and all of them have question marks to the not only quarterback play, which I guess you could say maybe about Terod Taylor, and even, you know, their target share. And that's something you're looking for. You need a guy with a big target share. That's how you produce a lot of fantasy football points. He's a great value at this pick. And that's why if I can get him as my fourth wide receiver on my fantasy football team, I'm all in. And that's why I'll be tra drafting him in the majority of my leagues. Now that'll wrap it up for the AFC South edition. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Wednesday, we're going to talk about the NFC South. So buckle in for that video. Tomorrow, we're talking about the top rookies to draft in fantasy football. We're going to go through all of them. We're talking about Najee Harris, Devon Dante Smith, you name it, all of those guys. We're going to be talking about them. I even have them timestamped all below in that next video. I appreciate you guys. Fantasy football videos coming out daily. You can't do it without you guys. We're growing this channel. 10K subscribers is on the way. We appreciate you. This has been Austin. I'll, I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Peace out.